What's up everyone, my name is Rudder Blue and welcome to the channel. Guys, before we get into today's video, um, I just wanna thank everybody for supporting this channel. You know, we've, we've had, you know, I made that announcement in the last video that I was going to be selling some of the Team Rocket Packs and a lot of you guys have reached out and I'll be giving some shout outs here in just a moment. So I really do appreciate the support, but I've also had some people reach out in the comments saying, oh man, these look awesome, I wish I can buy them to support the channel, but I just I just don't have the money right now. And let me just tell you straight up that just the fact that you guys are engaging with me, just the fact that you guys are commenting on my videos, you're liking the videos, you guys are subscribing, you're reaching out to me over Instagram and email. A lot of you guys are like tagging me on Instagram, like showing me your collections and, and tagging me and telling me how grateful you are, you are for my content. That is all the support that I need. So please do not feel like you need to buy something from me in order for, for um, the feeling to be mutual. You know, you guys make this possible. And really, I just wanna build a community and, and really a cool place that we can kind of come together, hang out, talk Pokemon, and just, you know, have fun with the hobby. So thank you guys for making this happen without you. I'm just talking to, into a microphone and it's all good memories for me, but you guys are really making this special. So thank you so much for your support. Alrighty guys, so for today's video, and I did mention it in the last one, is that I'm going to be talking about my best investment to date that I've made in Pokemon. Um, it's sitting in my collection, it will stay in my collection for a very long time until, I don't know, I may never sell it, I don't know, but um, we're gonna go into why it was um, the, the, the best decision then to make uh, that investment and why it is still today that I believe that it's it's just the smartest decision I've ever made in my uh, Pokemon collecting slash investing um, career, I guess you can call that. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Alrighty guys, so before we get into it, gotta give a quick shout out to the people that uh, decided to purchase some packs. First up we have Alex. And Alex decided to buy an art set. He bought one of each pack art. Went with the art set. Alex, thank you so much for that purchase. And then we also had Jordan, AKA Vintage Pokemon Lover on Instagram, come in with, again, guys, another art set. You know, so four, four individual packs. Um, both of those gentlemen were, were really nice to talk to, fun engaging with. You know, they were kind of asking me some questions back and forth, and, and I just love that, you know? It's just fun to, to, to network and to talk, and we're talking a little bit about ourselves. So thank you guys so much for supporting the channel in, in that way, and again, guys, just by liking this video, by liking any of my videos, by, by dropping me a comment, engaging with me, that is all the support that I need. So just wanted to make that clear, and I think I'm gonna show you guys um, because I don't want the, the video to be in this format the whole time. It gets kind of boring. So I'm gonna switch it back to the face cam here in just a second. But before I do, I'm going to show you guys up close what it is that I invested in. That is my, it's really the hard, it, it's it's the prize of my collection. It's, um, it's where my heart is. It's my favorite set. And that is saying a lot because I have a lot of favorite sets. There's just so much good stuff for Pokemon. I've been wanting to show you guys this for a long time. Didn't really know when to do it. I was gonna hold off for a while, but you know what? I figured I want you guys to understand what, what I think is just the safest investment in Pokemon and what has yielded me the most return, or I guess not most return, but the most money. So without further ado, guys, yes. Yes, yes, yes. First edition gym challenge sealed booster box. And you guys can even see here where the, the the outline is. A lot of booster boxes that's pushed in. It's not like, this is like in place. It is, and I love that. I just love that about this box. Um, absolute beauty. You know, it, I'd say it's in near mint condition. It's, it's not like super mint. You can tell like the corners aren't very, very sharp. Um, it's nothing, it's nothing crazy, but man, it is the prize of my collection. I absolutely love it. I look at it every single day, big fan of it. It even came in this cool magnetic case. Um, just a little bit of background on this box. I did get it from Collector's Cash. 
um, right when I re-entered the hobby, maybe within like a month of getting back into the hobby. So that's really cool. And um, it's a good display piece, you know, it just looks solid. Yeah, I got this within like a month after getting back into the hobby and I got it for $3,600. Now, if anybody keeps up on the market, you guys are like, oh my gosh, if I can only have gotten it back then. Well, at the time I was saying that <laughs> about earlier prices that I heard, you know, TCA Gaming and um, ZNG Emporium talk about these boxes, you know, getting them for a lot cheaper and even like primetime Pokemon talking about, you know, he's opened up every single booster box on, on his channel except for like a first edition base set, I think he hasn't, but um, just about every other set he's opened on his channel. And I, I went through and watched all those videos because I wanted to know all the cards in every single set and kind of get a lay of the land. And so I was a little crazy at first getting into a lot of different sets and checking them all out and, um, and all that good stuff. And we'll get into that here in a second. But, um, but yeah, guys, I mean, I was like $3,600, this is a lot of money. I don't know if I wanna do this. This is, is this crazy, is this insane? And so I wanna to talk to you guys, I'm gonna flip it back to the face cam of why I decided to go all in with Pokemon. Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed looking at that beauty. So for the rest of the video, I'm, I, I figured that it'd be best if I just kinda of talked in to you guys this way. I feel like it's a little bit more personal. Um, in that regards, that, that's just me personally. I kind of like watching YouTubers and looking at their expressions and, and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, $3,600 is what I paid for that box. Um, I really remember struggling with it because I had saved really, I'd saved a lot for that, you know? And again, I, I don't make a lot of money and, and I work very hard for my money. So I really remember like sitting there having a crossroads like, is this something I really, really want to go into? Is this something I really want to um, invest this much money into? And a lot of what went into that was that feeling that I got when I got back into Pokemon. It was, um, it really was nostalgia and it was just a passion for something that I've loved my entire life. You know, as soon as as soon as I was a, uh, I started opening packs as a kid, I would put them in in the binder. I'd keep them pristine. I would look at them all the time. A lot of my friends were playing and they were trading their cards and all this stuff. And I remember me and my brother like we would open packs and we would all put them in this binder. My brother would want to take them out and like play with them and all this stuff. And I would like get angry because for whatever reason, I was just a collector right off the get. I wanted to keep them mint. I wanted to keep them pristine. People wanted to trade me cards with them on the playground. I'm like, no, that's mine. I pulled that. Like my mom, like I worked hard on those chores and we went and got packs and I pulled that. I'm not, there's no way I'm trading that. So I think like when I got back into it as an adult, a lot of those feelings started coming back up and nostalgia is powerful. It is so powerful. That feeling of of chasing that, you know, when, when life was just a lot simpler and there's just so much, you know, um, it's all just so powerful in your brain. Um, but basically that was the feeling that, that I had. And, you know, SM Pratt just made a video on this, um, you know, a couple of days ago and he was talking about being first to market and it being, um, high risk and high reward. You know, I, every, every, investment is is a risk you know whether you're investing in real estate in the stock market i mean when i got back into pokemon i was telling my brother who is like an avid stock market person and always focusing on on looking at things and, and watching the fluctuations of the market and all this stuff and has had a, a ton of money invested and he kept telling me you know hey the the stock market is the the number one you know generator of money you know in the history of man and it's 10 percent you know, over, over the year, over year, you know, if, if it's a, if it's a pretty good year and your money makes money for you and all this stuff. And I was hearing it and do you know, I invest money in the stock market guys. I have an IRA. I really believe in having a device, diverse portfolio, but I saw the potential in Pokemon. I just did. And not only that, but I had a passion for it. So when you have a passion for something you want to, uh, you're willing to invest your time. You're willing to dig in, you're willing to do, you know, the research, which, which is what I did. So, um, you know, being first to the market, and believe me, I was nowhere near first to the market, but I really did take a, a high risk. And if I would have waited on that box, which in my mind, 
part of me told me to do, that box went up in value to four, five, six thousand dollars in the next like two months. And so I just had this feeling like I knew I needed to get it now. Now I don't want to create this urgency like this is what you have to do and you got to like attack and be hyper aggressive. That's not it. There's a time to be aggressive and a time not to be. And I think it's a, you got to really follow your gut. You got to do your homework and you got to at the end of the day follow your gut. And that's what I did. So, you know, my brother, my dad, all my family were telling me that I was full of spending this kind of money on Pokemon cards and I hate it. They go, you still look at Pokemon cards? Like you're, you're, what? You're spending thousands of dollars on Pokemons or Pokemans? And I'm just like, oh my gosh, guys, it's Pokemon. And yes, you guys don't understand where the market is and that's okay, I don't expect you to, but just know that I'm an adult and that I have been, this isn't an, an impulse buy, it's something that I've been studying and researching and it's it's an up and coming market and especially now. And I don't like defending myself like that. And so basically what I told them is, is hey, I'm going to invest a, a large chunk of my money now. And if it doesn't do good, I learned a lesson. And if it does, I have a lot to gain, you know? And so I, I went for it, you know? And again, a lot of that went into me being nostalgic and me kind of willing to take that risk. And again, if I would have waited, if I wasn't first to market, you know, at that time, if I wasn't willing to get in at that moment, even though it wasn't like for certain that it was going to go up, of all the factors, again, we're going to dive into those factors right now, I decided to go for it and man, it has paid off. So just real quick guys, that box is now sitting out, I got it for $3,600 plus tax came out to about four grand. Um, and that box is sitting at around you know thirteen to fourteen thousand dollars on eBay right now. Um, the last three sold for this month alone in July sold for. There was a, a best offer accepted at twelve grand, so it was less than twelve grand, and then one sold at twelve grand, and then a best offer was accepted at fourteen grand. So it was at fourteen grand listed, but then a best offer was accepted, so it could have been lower. It could have been. 13 grand, 12 grand, 10 grand, I don't know. It, does, it doesn't really say. I could look up the price. Um, there's a way that you guys can do that um, to look it up. But just for the sake of the video real quick, just looking up the stats, that's what it's sold for. So let's just take 12 grand because that's a number that it's sold for. And I've even seen a couple sell at, you know, eight, nine thousand dollars $9,000. If it sold it at 12 grand, that's over three times my money. And it, it, again, it's not like, oh, I bought this card at $30 and it's selling at $90 now, which is like three times my money, which is awesome. You know, look for those all day long. We always want that. I got lots of stuff like that. But this is lots of money that we're talking about. And, you know, again, there was a lot of risk going into that. And so at the time, why I chose Gym Challenge, there was multiple factors because Team Rocket was very big at the time. Everybody was buying Team Rocket. Everybody wanted Team Rocket. Um, you know, you had Base Set, you had First Edition Jungle, which was, you know, starting to rise quickly in value. Um, you know, lots of those sets. And even like Gym, Gym Heroes, which is a, another fan favorite set. Like, very, very solid. I went with Gym Challenge and here's why. I did the scarcity, rarity, and popularity just in my head, just, just naturally, I just did it. And so I was looking at the market, right? I was looking at how many were posted on eBay, how many boxes. Um, there was about three to five um, when I was looking at it, around three, four, five listings. And they were all listing for around the same price. And one was listing at like $5,000. And I remember thinking, oh, it's ridiculous. Like you're never gonna get that. Or it'll take a while for you to get that, man. Like I had no idea the market would explode this this big, this quickly. Um, so in terms of scarcity on eBay, it wasn't a super scarce item. Um, it was pretty red readily available. So, you know, that, that did, you know, kind of play a role. But I did see the price that I that I had that was listed for thirty six hundred dollars. There was only one left, okay, and so it really kind of like made me think like, okay, this is something that I I really need to consider buying now. Okay, the second one is rarity. Now, again, rarity can be um, there's no like definition on on rarity. It's all perspective, and so to me, a first edition Watsi booster box is rare. That's just me. It can be any first edition Watsi booster box. So that's why I, I wanted to go with the Watsi era. 
And then, um, you know, there wasn't a ton of listings on eBay. You know, you had Team Rocket boxes and, and Fossil boxes. You know, there were a lot. There was lots and lots of listings, but even that I would still consider a rare item. So we'll just leave it at that. It's not a, um, an illustrator or a crazy trophy card or nothing of that rarity, but popularity. This is the main reason why I went with um, Gym Challenge. And it wasn't because it was popular amongst everybody else. It hadn't hit that God tier level of popularity yet. It was a popular set, don't get me wrong. But I went with it because it was popular for me. When I got back into Pokemon, I looked up every single set. I was watching YouTubers open up packs to see all the different pulls. The, not only just the hollows, but the non hollows. If they had reverse hollows, I was looking at that. I was looking at all the artwork. I was going on Bulbapedia.com and looking up every single card. I was looking at um, all the pop reports and PSA, all those factors. I just wanted to see what cards were out there because there was a lot that I didn't know about. I grew up on base sets, so I was opening base, uh, jungle, and fossil. I stopped at that. So there were so many sets that I had never even seen and there was a lot to catch up on. Even with Wizards of the Coast, there was a lot to catch up with. So I started there, I started at Wizards of the Coast and I started looking through all the sets and you know, I really liked Expedition, I really liked Sky Ridge. Neo Genesis grabbed me. I was so tempted to buy a Neo Gen box because I just saw huge potential there and man, that box is I should have gone with Neo Genesis. <laughs> that box is like gone crazy up. And I was really clinging to Neo uh, Revelation and Neo Destiny. Neo Discovery, I'm not the biggest fan of, to be honest with you, but those three Neo sets, but I really like Neo Genesis off the get. There was something about it that just, I love that Lugia and the T17. They were all super low priced and I just saw the huge potential. But getting back to the gym challenge, I like Gym Heroes a lot, and in fact, I've really grown to have a deep appreciation for Gym Heroes and those cards. But I remember at the time, everybody was always talking about Charizard. And in my mind, I was like, Charizard's a money card, so I'm gonna buy a set that has a Charizard. If it doesn't have a Charizard, I don't care how much I like it. Jungle Fossil, waste of my time. Don't even wanna do it. Even though they have a ton of nostalgia for me, I had to put in that factor of Charizard. And again, that plays into the popularity um, a little bit. But I was looking up every single Charizard artwork. Gym Challenge is arguably the best. It's not my favorite artwork, personally. We'll get into that in another video. But I just looked through all the artwork for the Gym Challenge set, and I was just blown away. There were so many good Pokemon within that set. And not only that, but the Gym sets were very unique. You know, um, they had the trainers on them, you know? Sabrina's Alakazam. Erica's Venusaur, Blaine's Charizard, that was cool, you know, like it had the little picture of their head on the on the bottom of their card, it's very unique, unlike anything in Pokemon, and I absolutely love the non hollows for Gym Challenge, I just think that it has amazing artwork, and so what I started to do was I wanted to look up um, the pop report, you know, inside this box, what are potential pulls that would make people want to open these packs? Again, popularity, it, I wasn't thinking of it in that way, but that's where my head went. Like, do people wanna open these packs? Do Will people want this down the line? And so I started looking at the cards inside and I started looking at the pop reports because I just think that people want something that they can't have. And if they had, there's, it's just like the T17, you know, there's such a little pop report of that. People wanna go and chase that card to try to get one of the only 10s in the world, you know? Like it's, so it, it's a chase card, like a, a, among chase cards. Like it, it's a very fun thing to go for as a collector. So I was looking at all the pop reports and I have my notes here and just looking at it, I'm gonna give you the, the uh, reports. There are four Pokemon under 100 PSA 10s in the world, okay? At, coming in at number four, we have Erica's Venusaur, 78 in the pop, okay? That's not a lot. 78 PSA 10s in the entire world. And this is for first edition, this is not unlimited, okay? Uh, number three is the Koga's Beedrill. I actually really, really like this artwork. Um, probably for any bug Pokemon, I'm a big fan of Beedrill. I just think he's, he's pretty slept on. But there's only 60 in the world for a first edition PSA 10 Cocos Big Drill. Coming in at number two, we have Giovanni's Persian. This card looks so awesome. 
so much hollow foil. You can tell right off the get. It's just print line after print line after print line with this thing. Um, white hollow, but it's just a very cool looking car. Persian's coming at you. It's just directly on. I really, really like that um, perspective. Very cool card, and it's it's very iconic, you know, with Giovanni, and then you know you always see him in the anime with the Persian sitting next to him like all the time. Um, even in the movies, you know, Persian is usually there. So very iconic card. You can there's 51 of those in the world. 51. That's so little. And then coming in right below that at number one, guys, we have Misty's Gold Duct. <sighs> Somebody was asking me. They did a post on Instagram. What's your favorite? Um, What's your favorite card from Gym Challenge? So many came to mind. You know, Blaine's Arcanine, Blaine's Charizard. I love Erica's Venusaur, but I had to go with the Misty's Gold Duct. And I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna show you guys a little treat. A lot of you guys have been wanting to know this table behind me, what's on there. Let me go pull a card real quick, hold on. Coming in from the back row out of left field. This is not the first edition version, okay? But just look at that beauty. I mean, let me take my face out of the picture here, guys. It just, it is so dang stunning. I hope it's in focus. I hope you guys can see it. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful in the light, that shine. It's just a PSA 9. I got a lot of these. Um, I got like eight PSA 9s for like I don't know, 120 bucks. <laughs> when I first got into the hobby, absolute steal, crazy stuff. I'll go into that in another video as well. Um, love that card, Missy's Gold Duct. Um, PSA 10, again, is like 48 in the entire pop. So these these cards, there, there was a lot of low cards, that, uh, or a lot of cards that didn't have high population, right? So that played a very big factor into me uh, purchasing this stuff. And Ultimately, why why I really did it, guys, is that I always wanted a booster box. I knew off the get that it was going to be the safest investment. And to me, for for the amount of money that I could spend, you know, thirty six hundred dollars, four thousand dollars, I had a couple options. But Gym Challenge just took the cake for me. Out of all those factors that we just talked about, um, I knew that that was that was the set for me. And regardless, at least I would have a box, a sealed box of arguably my favorite set in all of Pokemon. And I was happy with that. I wasn't buying something that I didn't like. I wasn't buying something um, because of hype or any of that stuff. I bought something that was close to my heart. I absolutely loved the artwork. And I, I just thought, hey, it's a first edition uh, Watsy box. If it goes down, it goes down but everything in, in my mind, everything that I was looking at told me it was going to go up. So I wanted to share this with you guys. Um, one, just to, one to, to show you guys that box. And to two, to really get you to start to understand the power of booster boxes, um, especially for Wizards of the Coast. I don't think every booster box is worth investing in. Um, I do think that just about every booster box will go up over time for the most part it might fluctuate a little bit but for the most part you know sealed product is getting more open more and more every single day more and more people want to open packs so if the if the demand stays high if it stays where it is right now um the supply is going to keep getting lower and lower and lower and that's why booster boxes are so safe and that's why i wanted to spend if it was going to be a lot of money you know i was looking at that t17 for a psa 10 for like six grand i almost got it and I just thought to myself, man, it's one card. What if this card never takes off? I, I just had a feeling that Booster Box was the way for me. I don't wanna go too much longer into this, guys, but sealed product is king. Um, I do think that like first edition base, PSA 9 Charizards have gone up exponentially. I mean, it was sitting at like 4,500 when I got back into the hobby. Now they're selling for like well over 15 grand. Um, so don't get me wrong, there are cards out there that are king and that do very well, but there are also a lot riskier and it's a lot more niche market PSA cards. A lot of people when they get back into the hobby, they know packs, they know people want to open packs. They, they're they here because they opened up packs as a kid. They, they're here because, or maybe their kids open up packs. You know, uh, ZNG said it the best in a video. He said, you know, opening packs is the lifeblood of Pokemon. 
it, it's what keeps us all here. It brings us back to that nostalgic, you know, um, memory. And I, I just couldn't agree more. So I knew that I wanted to invest in a, in a booster box because people are always going to be wanting to open up sealed product. So if you guys do have money, I think sealed product is always very, very good, safe investment. And I'm a big fan of Wizards of the Coast. That's just me. And again, guys, I let time work for me. There was many times where I could have sold this box for $6,000 and could have made a quick flip like two months later. And a lot of people were telling me, sell this box, sell it. You've made the profit, go for it. Do not hold on to this, it can go down. No, I know what I have. And I, more importantly, I know what it's worth to me and what I want. So, you know, buy, buy certain sets, you know, scarcity, um, rarity and popularity. Look at those factors. Look at the cards inside of its sealed product. Look at the pop reports to see, you know, do people want to open up these, these packs? Look at all those factors. And, and at the end of the day, collect what you love. That's what I did. And it's done very, very, very well for me. And I just wanted to share that advice with, with you guys to really put your heart into Pokemon and, um, and to put in the work. So kind of a longer video today. Sorry if I rambled a little bit, but again, Gym Challenge is such a fun set for me. I love it so much. Right now, guys, as I'm uh, posting this video, I am on vacation in Whitefish, Montana, and I'm sure I'm gonna be having a great time. I'm with my girlfriend all weekend long. We're going to have an excellent time, and so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And, and you know, thank you again so much for supporting me, guys. <sighs> I'm overwhelmed and I'm very, very humbled with all you guys reaching out, saying very nice things and just encouraging me to, to keep going. And so I'm just gonna keep going on this journey with you. So thank you guys so much for your support and I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.